Happy Wednesday. I hope all of you are doing well. I am excited to be back. Oh, Tristan is here. Hi, Tristan. I'm excited to have you back. I haven't seen you in a while. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, thanks, everyone, for stopping by. You know, I actually just noticed something this week as I was going to stream uh, that I should have caught last week. Um, but last week was one day off of my one-year anniversary of streaming on Twitch. Um, oh, and we got a sub from Tristan. Why didn't the alert go off? That's upsetting. Hold on. The alerts should be working. Oh, you know why? Because I don't have the alerts on the webcam uh, scene, but it is on the coding scene. So, you know, what? I'm going to switch over here and I'm going to replay your alert. There you go. A scuffed streamer. Yeah. Right after I got done saying I've been streaming for an entire year, uh, everything breaks. It shows that I learned nothing in the last year. Um, almost Thursday in Germany. Thank you for stopping by. You know, I it's actually really funny. A lot of regulars in here are in the European time zones. Um, but I stream, like, after work in the Eastern U.S. time zone. I expected that would work for some, like, U.S.-based devs, and all my regulars are from Europe. Uh, but that's fine. You know, if that's what works for all of you, I appreciate all of you coming to hang out and do this. Um, but yeah, one year of doing this. That's crazy. I should have done something to celebrate. The year anniversary maybe since i missed it maybe we can do something this month for some reason i thought august was that one year anniversary and then i looked it up like five minutes ago before i started and the first time i live streamed on this channel was july 8th of 2020 so we're a year and a week over um but that's exciting i really appreciate all the support from everyone who comes into the stream uh i've had a ton of fun doing this i hope all of you have learned a lot from this um, and hopefully we can continue to have fun and learn together, uh, which is what we're going to do tonight. So tonight is going to be one of those streams where I've picked a topic, uh, but I come completely unprepared. I have not done anything around using permissions inside Jetpack Compose yet. I looked at code for a whole like 20 minutes uh, to get like some idea of what we would be working on, um, and that's it. And I even, I made an Android Studio project, but I just used like the default template. So like here you can see inside main activity uh, where it just shows like this hello Android text. Um, that's all like out of the box template. I haven't changed anything in the code today. So we're all going to dive into this together. Um, and with that, let me show you where I think we can start looking at uh, using permissions in Jetpack Compose. So. Uh, this actually came from a suggestion on Twitter. Uh, someone who's been watching the stream sent me a direct message on Twitter because they were trying to do something with permissions. And I hadn't even considered uh, permissions in Jetpack Compose because I assumed that it wouldn't have changed. Uh, I assumed that, you know, since your code lived inside an activity or a fragment and you had access to those classes, that you would just use permissions the same way we do today. Uh, but it also does make sense that if you want to call those permissions from a specific composable where you don't have access or, well, direct access necessarily to, like, the context and things like that, um, that you would need to do something differently. And also, maybe you don't, but maybe it makes sense to have, like, a, a tool uh, for handling permissions inside composables that eliminates some of the boilerplate we would need. Uh, so one solution to that is this um, accompanist, uh, well, it's not a single library, but list of libraries from Google. And I'm going to go ahead and drop this in chat for all of you. Um, but if you can read this here, so this is a group of libraries that aim to supplement Jetpack Compose with features that are commonly required but not yet available. Uh, so think of this as Google's way of providing things that we need to do in Compose, but for any number of reasons, aren't baked directly into Buzzlord, thank you for the follow. For whatever reason, aren't baked directly into the Compose libraries. Now, uh, there's some questions here, like, will they be added in the future? I don't know. Uh, maybe they'll always exist as something separate. Um, you know, maybe there's something you could build yourselves. I think there's a lot of open questions. And part of that is because Compose is at such an early stage um, that some of these things actually might not be relevant down the line. Maybe there will be a whole new way to handle them. Um, 
That doesn't quite apply to permissions, but for example, um, this accompanist package has some image loading libraries and it has composed implementations of two popular libraries, Coil and Glide. Um, and I say this because like when Compose was first released, uh, I know the Coil library out of the box didn't support it. So this library was a way to use like Coil inside Jetpack Compose. Uh, but I think, and don't quote me on this, I'd have to check out the issue tracker, but I think the team at, I believe Instacart, uh, who makes Coil is trying to add like first party support. Um, and if Coil has first party support for Compose, then we no longer need this accompanist library. So that's one reason why it might change, but uh, there's a whole list of helpful extensions here. We've got insets, system UI controller, um, a pager, um, placeholders, flow layouts. Ooh, this actually sounds really good. I didn't see that until today. Uh, easy to use modifiers for, dis for displaying a placeholder UI while content is loading. That sounds really cool. That's already gonna be another stream, I can tell. Uh, swipe to refresh and permissions. Um, this is a library that provides Android runtime permission support for Jetpack Compose. So that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, permissions is a common thing in a lot of Android apps, whether you need access to the camera, storage, uh, user's location, you know, their microphone, um, any of those things. Uh, and that's what we're just talking about that wild dog. Today we're going to look at, um, dealing with permissions inside Jetpack Compose code. And we haven't started yet. Uh, we're just given the rundown on uh, what we were going to talk about. So I'm gonna copy this implementation real quick. So we went through that uh, there's this accompanist permissions library, 0.14.0, uh, I need to remember that, uh, that will provide those utilities for using permissions inside Jetpack Compose. So let's Get that out of the way first. Let's go into our build.gradle file um, and add that dependency really quick. And let's do it at 14. That's it. And let's just sync that. So I also have, in case I need it, I have the accompanist repo um, opened up in Android Studio. I can show you all really quick what that repo looks like. Um, I debated just going through their sample code, which already exists, and trying to understand uh, permissions. Uh, the reason I decided not to do that is because I think that, I know I as an individual learn better when I type it out um, and talk through it line by line as I do it, rather than just reading code. Um, and you, know, you all following along maybe aren't typing, but again, by uh, forcing me to talk about it as I write it, I think that helps a lot of people learn better too. So that's what we're going to do. Um, it's actually really interesting that I said that I just had a flashback. That was how I learned uh, Java in college. So my first Java class, uh, the professor, when they gave us, you know, code that we needed to understand, um, rather than just giving us the Java files to run inside our IDE, they basically projected the code um, onto the whiteboard. And then we were all at our laptops or computers, and we had to type up the code line for line as we saw it on the projector, type it into our own IDE and run it. Um, and that was the explanation that we would get muscle memory and we would understand the code better um, if we wrote it out ourselves. And I really had like just a ton of um, respect and appreciation for that professor and how it helped me learn programming. And it's a tactic that I've kept going throughout my career. Um, you know, sometimes on stream, I don't necessarily show it, I go faster, but sometimes when I'm looking up answers on Stack Overflow, rather than directly copy and paste, I'll pull up Stack Overflow in another window and I'll type up the answer myself because that helps me understand what exactly I'm fixing and not just copy and pasting a solution without actually understanding it. Um, but sorry, all of this is to fill fluff because I'm trying to run the company sample and I'm just waiting on Gradle to build uh, you all know how it is. I need to work on my my Twitch fluff. Um, what else can I talk about? Oh, well, I can fluff and talk about YouTube. Um, some of you know that I've been working on a subscriber goal uh, for 600 subscribers. I'm going to do a case study video uh, 
doing a deep dive into like a specific feature and understanding how MVI and MVVM work differently for a given feature to try and understand the nuances of the two architecture patterns. Um, the sample app for that video is done. I just need to sit down and record it. Maybe I'll record parts of it tonight or tomorrow uh, because we should be hitting uh, that subscriber mark very soon. Let's see what we're at right now. We are at when YouTube loads. Um, we're at 573. So we just need 27 more people. Um, I've intentionally not pushed it a ton because I want to finish that video and I don't want people to hit that and then be upset that I didn't release the video like the same day. Uh, but I'm hoping we hit it this week. Um, hopefully I can watch that video this weekend. I don't know why this is taking so long. This is taking like an uncomfortably long amount of time. Um, so maybe that you, oh, there we go. Three minutes and 23 seconds. All right, so let's look at their sample real quick. So this is cool. This shows all of the accompanist libraries and some detailed uh, examples. So basically the one we're gonna recreate today is permissions. Um, I didn't actually look at request multiple permissions, but I'm going to start with this request permission. Um, but this launches a new composable that um, requests the camera permission. So it gives you some information, like the camera permission is important. Um, if I request the permission, this pops up asking me for the camera permission. Um, if I deny it, uh, I think then... Uh, I'm allowed to ask again, right? And then I get this allow, deny, or deny and don't ask again. If I hit deny now, whoops, sorry. No. If I hit deny and don't ask again, uh, now we will see, like, it has to show an additional rationale. So it says permission denied, see this FAQ with information about why we need this permission. And then now you have to open the settings screen. So it shows how to or open up the settings screen. So I think we're basically going to follow that same flow. Uh, it might be good to look at multiple permissions while we're at it, um, but I think uh, we could just start by asking for one. So I'm going to take an iterative approach with this, as we always do. And I think what I want to start with is let's just throw a button on the screen and have it so when I click that button, I request the camera permission. And then we'll go through and we'll figure out how do we deal with the response to that? Um, how do we configure, like, if we should show this rationale, open up the settings page? We'll all do that iteratively. Uh, but let's just do the bare bones of getting a button and requesting the permission. So I'm going to go into main activity. I'm going to delete this test code. And actually, because I want the focus to be on permissions in here, I think I'm just going to type everything out into the main activity. I'm not really going to worry about, like, architecture, splitting up the code, unless it gets really complicated. Um, we're just going to keep like bare bones, compose stuff, uh, and try to request permissions. So let's start there. Let's do a button. Um, on click, we'll fill it out in a second. And we'll throw some text in here. And we'll say request camera permission. OK, so that's good. Um, now, where do I even start with this? This is what I don't know. Um, so I am going to peek into the, let's see, they didn't have, all right, so I want to see if the accompanist docs has, oh, this, this is complicated, never mind. I want to see if the docs had um, code showing how to work with permissions. It's not right here. Hi, Dallas, thank you for coming by. Um, it's not right here. So let's look at, Let's actually look at um, hmm. let's look at the sample code briefly, and like I said, we'll go over and we'll type it up ourselves so we can try to understand it. Um, ah, I gotta hydrate. Thank you. Cheers. Um, so we'll look at this sample, and then like I said, we'll we'll port it over. So here's the sample theme. It looks like it creates the sample composable, and I'm even collapsing this just to cut to the important stuff. It's got this lambda for how to navigate to the settings screen. We're going to worry about that later. 
Um, so we've got the sample, we've got do not show rationale. So this says track if the user doesn't want to see the rationale anymore. I'm not sure what, so this was a question I got on Twitter talking about this. I'm not really sure what they're trying to accomplish in the sample with this. Maybe it will make sense as we iteratively go through this, but let's ignore it for now. Um, but this is the first line that uh, I care about, which is we've got this camera permission state, which is called remember permission state. So let's take this line and um, let's bring this over into our sample app and let's start here. Uh, and I'll show you actually how I would approach digging into this. So I'm going to do exactly what I said. I'm going to, instead of pasting it, I'm going to write it out myself so I remember this. Uh, no pun intended. Remember this. All right, that pun was intended. I'm sorry. Uh, so permission.camera. Um, now, why is this yelling at me? Ah, because it's experimental. Oh, yes, Anya, thank you for coming by. Anya is the one who asked questions about um, permissions in Compose, so I was excited. Um, yeah, let's add this opt-in. So interesting that this is marked as experimental. That's something uh, for everyone to keep in mind. Um, I guess that means proceed at your own risk, but we'll find out how stable or unstable it seems to be. Um, so the reason I looked through the sample and I saw this one line for remember permission state, and then I decided to get out of the sample code and come back into our app, is because I thought this was a good point for us to start discussing how we can research and pull information about the library ourselves. Now, you can keep going with the sample app, that's what it's there for. Um, I personally like to dig around and find things myself, and then, especially on stream, to talk through that process um, and how I find things. So what I wanted to do is I saw this method called remember permission state, and it sounds important. Um, and the name gives me a good example of what's being returned, that there's this permission state uh, type. But what I want to do is understand more about what a permission state is. So if we command click into the docs, we can see this returns permission state. Let's click on this and let's understand this better. So a permission state has a permission, um, true if the user has granted it or not, uh, true if we should show rationale. I believe that this is, I believe that this is true. I always forget how the permission system works. I believe that this is true if the user has denied a permission once, and then we want to show the rationale. Um, interesting. I don't think the current system has a name for this, but like if the permission was requested once, um, and then there's this launch permission request. Um, this triggers a system dialog. I don't know if we will need to worry about that. Um, maybe we can look a little more at the sample, but um, now that we understand this permission state, I guess we can um, maybe customize the UI based on this. So actually, yes, we do care about that launch one because what we can do is, so we've got this button here, you know, that says request camera permission. Right here, we could do camera permission state uh, launch permission request. That's what I want to happen when I click the button. And so this is what I said. This is our iterative approach. Let's get a button on the screen. Let's request the permission. And then let's step into, well, what do we do if they have or don't have the permission? You know, we'll do all of that next. Uh, but let's start here. And this is a new project that has like no files. So this Gradle build should not take long at all. All right, cool. So we've got a button, request camera permission. We click this, and nothing happened. All right, that's a great start. Um, let's try to understand why. So the way I'm going to try to understand that is go back into the sample app, 
and see if um, we can understand it a little further. So in the sample app, they have this permission required composable. And I like that they use named arguments so we can understand the different portions to this. So there's a permission state. There's the content to show if the permission's not granted. There's content to show if it's not available, which basically means it's been denied and said, do not ask again. And so this is where we go to the settings screen. Um, and it looks like this last parameter is probably if the permission's already granted, we show this text. Okay, so let's look at, um, okay, well, we've got this not granted content. Um, I still don't know why they had this do not show rationale thing. Um, maybe that's to allow the user to say they never want to be requested for miss this permission at all or something. Um, but otherwise, it has this rationale. And it says, um, OK, if they click do not show, we set this. This is on request permission. We do launch permission request, which looks like that is inside of a button click, just like we did. So the sample app looks just like ours. Um, remember permission state, camera permission state that launch. OK, so why doesn't our app work? Well, let's make sure. Oh, did I run old code? Let's see what happens here when I actually click on the button. Well, let's make sure this code is even called. Are we going to have one of those one of those days? Is this not called? Um, I just want to make sure that I hit this breakpoint. I'm a little confused at why this code that we already have doesn't work. Oh, this is super weird. Why doesn't this work? Hmm. Well, maybe this is why it's called experimental. Uh -huh. Let's print something in the logs just to make sure this button click is working. This is weird. I love I love a good weird stream. And it shouldn't be as weird as like two weeks ago when I spent 30 minutes uh, wondering why something wasn't triggered and then it turned out I wasn't calling the code. I'm like pretty sure that I should be calling the code in this example. Okay, we clicked the button. But this camera permission state that launch permission request doesn't seem to be doing anything. Oh, huh. I I have a hunch, chat. Um, the doc related with the method. Yeah, let's check this. Um, so it says request the permission to the user. This should always be triggered from non-composable scope, for example, from a side effect or a non-composable callback. Otherwise, this will result in an illegal state exception. Um, okay, but the button click, the buttons on click method, did satisfy this. Um, this triggers a system dialog that asks the user to grant or revoke the permission. Note that this dialog might not appear on the screen if the user doesn't want to be asked again or has denied the permission multiple times. This behavior varies depending on the Android level API. So that what you just said in here is what I think I forgot is I think that even though it's a runtime permission, I think I still need it in the manifest. Um, I actually want to check if that's true of the sample app. Yeah, so even though I'm using a runtime permission, I still need to define the permission inside the manifest. So let's go into our Android manifest file and let's um, let's add that. Great catch. It's been a while since I've done permissions work. Um, 
So interesting that it just fails silently. Um, I would have hoped for some logs there, but maybe I'll I'll leave a note. Maybe I'll ask about that. Um, wait, mission is not in manifest. Is this expected? Cool. All right. So now now we do have um, the dialogue. So can I click away and ignore it? Um, okay, let's deny it. Um, but cool. All right, so that's that's a start. We've been able to request our permission now. So that's the first step. This is actually a lot nicer uh, than it does today because you have to like start permission result thing, and then there's like some on permission result callback. Uh, but here it's really nice. It's just this remember permission state. Um, and this will recompose um, once you launch this and it gets a callback. This remember permission state will change, and so everything will be recomposed, which is nice. Um, so what do we want to do next? Um, actually, what I want to do next is um, I want to... What do I want to do? Um, I want to run this, and I want to dive into the permission state now that I've denied the permission once, so I can uh, clarify and get that deeper understanding of what that permission state looks like in this example. Um, that makes sense that that wouldn't trigger there. I don't think this was getting called, though, either. None of my breakpoints wanted to get called. Um, why not? Uh, can I log the permission state? I just want to hit like any breakpoint. Um, can I hit this? Can you not hit breakpoints inside a composable? That might be a thing. Um, I feel like that is not the thing, but. If none of these hit, well, we're, maybe it's not. Okay, so we're not going to go that route. Um, I'm trying to think about what I might want to change if um, stuff isn't there. So let's say, um, let's say that, like, so if you request a permission, let's go back to that permission state, wherever it was. If you request permission, and the user has denied it, then usually that triggers this should show rationale boolean. And the reason for this typically is like, let's say you ask for the user's camera and they're like, what the heck? I'm not giving you permission to use my camera. So it denies it. Uh, but maybe the next time you need it, you might want to show some explanation about why you need the camera. You know, we need the camera to upload your profile picture or something. Um, then you can show that rationale before you then request the permission one more time. So let's um, let's do something like that. Let's say, um, we'll say if camera permission state that should show rationale, um, let's add some text and say, you know, um, this is a rationale explaining why we should, why we need the camera permission. Um, we are displaying this because the user has denied the permission once. Um, and let's clean this up before it gets a little more confusing. I'm going to move this into its own function, and I'm going to call this request permission button. I'm going to call this permission rationale. And I'm going to throw all of this into a column so it looks nice. Um, we can even do like a, I'm literally just going to add some spacing. Just going to make the screen look a little nicer for our sample app.
Okay. So if we should show a rationale, we're going to add that text. Otherwise, we just add the permissions button. Let's do that. Um, why are you yelling at me? Import that. Um, we're going to throw this experimental permission opt in all the way at the top of main activity. Now let's run this. So I think if my understanding of the permission system is correct, we will see um, the rationale on top of the button. And we do. And it doesn't look good because all of this is um, the theme is wrong. So how do we do this? Um, do, 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 do. Wrap that all on a surface. Easy way to solve this problem. Um, but cool, this is as expected, is that um, we see the rationale because we've asked for the permission before and it's not there. So let's actually do a fresh install, um, which should clear that uh, history that we ever even asked for. What is this called? Um, that's not the one. I don't remember which of these two apps it is. Yeah, compose permissions. We're going to do a fresh install uh, because then we should be able to see that change happen in real time. Yep, okay, so right now we've never ever asked to use it for permission, so we just see this button. If we request it and um, they deny it, now we see that we need to show a rationale explaining why we needed the permission. And this will continue to be there until the user either allows the permission or says deny and don't ask again. So let's let's keep that. I'm gonna let's go into the um, allow side first. So what we can do is um, why don't we, just to keep it simple, let's go into our request permission button. And um, let's say, OK, let's say we only want to do this. Um, if the user doesn't already have the permission. So if the user doesn't have the permission, we're going to launch the permission request. Uh, but the other thing is, let's say we want to change the button text based on this. So we can say button text will be if camera permission state that has permission. Um, we can say camera permission granted. Otherwise, we'll say request camera permission as the button text. OK. So let's run this. Let's see. This should be our next iterative step. Um, if you have time after this, could you also show how the camera can be started? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to do that. Um, we'll definitely have time because I think that we're close to the um, end of permissions, at least for a singular permission. We could look at um, requesting more than one permission. It's another example from. Uh, the accompany sample but So let's request permission. This time we will allow the permission. Nice, and now we see camera permission granted. And when I click on this, nothing happens. Um, so that's, we looked at the single deny case. We looked at the success case. Um, I actually don't like the way I changed this here. Um, let's, let's, um, Let's change this up. Let's create a composable. Um, call it permission granted text. Or we can even keep it a button just to make it clear. Um, and so, actually, we don't even need the state here. And let's create a button. On click, we will do nothing. And we'll just put some text that says camera permission granted. 
So let me show you why I'm doing all this refactoring here. Um, I'm doing this refactoring because I don't want this request permission button to look confusing and have um, you know code that is toggling based on the permission. I'd actually rather that code that configures the UI uh, be up here in this column where it's easier to follow. So like here, we can say if camera permission state that has permission, then we're gonna show permission granted button, else show the request permission button. So I think this code is actually a little clearer for everyone who's been following along, is now you can look at this column where we configure the activity, and it becomes easier to see um, how the permission state maps to the UI. A uh, question here from Jimmy. I always feel the permission API is too verbose. That's why I frequently use Dexter. Do you feel it is confusing as well? I do feel it is confusing. Um, I think a lot of it's right. Uh, my biggest gripe with the permission system is this parameter right here. Um, I don't think it's clear what this parameter means. And inside the existing framework, if you want to test that a permission has been denied forever, uh, there's no single Boolean for that. Um, it's actually just like, you have to check, does the user not have the permission? And it should show rationale false or something like that. It becomes really confusing to see the denied forever scenario. Um, but that's interesting, I think, with this compose sample, um, I think that that is, hmm, I actually think that it might be um, the same problem here. I wonder if we could check deny and we'll have to look at the sample. Um, is composable fun starts with capital letter, common thing? Yeah, that is the convention. If you have a composable function, it should start with a capital letter. That's the convention. Um, yeah, interesting. So Dexter sa saves a shared press for that. Uh, it didn't look like the Compose example did that, so I actually want to look at the accompanist sample again, and let's see how they did it. So there is this permission not available content. Oh, and it's basically doing the same thing. So if we have the permission, we show something. Otherwise, it's checking should show rationale or the permission's never been requested. Um, but otherwise then it's not available. So see, this is confusing. I don't like this. Um, what I would have done is, I'm going to do it right here because Kotlin is a beautiful thing. Um, I would have done something like permission state that has been denied forever. And so then I could say, um, well, let's, to add this but then we can do like um return this dot uh the permission requested and not this that should should i think that's how you do it and i don't like this but it's like um if we should avoid showing a rationale and we know the user has requested their permission before this means they have said deny and don't ask me again. Uh, so this is what I would have done, is I would have made this like a flag. Let's try this and let's see if I understand it right. So uh, we can basically copy this same signature here and let's call it, you know, uh, permission denied button. And so we can say, um, camera permission denied for good, open settings. This will be a really long button. Um, oh, good questions here. Let me read those in a second after I finish up trying this idea. So let's try my extension function. So here we've got, if they have the permission, um, do that. We could say else if um, camera permission state that has been denied forever, then um, Sorry, I'll clean this up. Um, oh god, did I break the code? I think I did. Else if um, has been denied forever, we do permission denied button. Otherwise, 
request permission button. I guess we can make this a when statement. This looks kind of nice here. Um, let's run this. Let's see how this works. I might actually have to go in and deny the permission again to get this to work again. Uh, but question here. React Native is complicated. I'm a great programmer, um, but never touch web maybe a tiny bit. I'm not a web developer, so I can't really give good recommendations on React. Um, we are building an Android app. We're using Jetpack Compose and Colin to build an Android application. And I think I broke it. Um, why did I break it? Oh, no, I didn't break it. It just didn't start. So let's go into our app settings really quick. And let's go to permissions. Let's deny the camera permission. It gives some shortcuts for revoke permissions. Um, interesting, Tim. I'll check that out. Um, how much harder would it be to make multi-platform? Well, there is a, uh, there is like a Kotlin uh, multi-platform framework out there, but I'm not super familiar with it. Um, but it would allow you to build apps for both platforms using Kotlin. Um, okay, let's request the permission. Let's deny and don't ask again. And great, we got this uh, settings denied, this long button, but at least it explains what happened. Um, cool, so that is actually um, the three sort of main flows when asking for permission. There's, um, it's never been asked for, so we need to show it. Uh, there's, it's been asked for, they had deny once, so we show this rationale. Um, then there's, you know, um, yeah, I think that was all that. Or it's been denied forever, so we do this. Uh, and this, we could even clean up this if statement. Uh, should really only be like here in this fallback. Because if they have the permission, there's no need for the rationale. If it's been denied forever, we're not going to show it. So it's really just in this else block that we would show that. Um, uh, I don't think that Compose and Kotlin make it harder to make the app beautiful. We're just not focusing on UI in today's stream because we're just trying to build out um, the permission system but you can definitely make great UIs using Kotlin and Jetpack Compose. Let's push this code really quick, um, handling main permission flows. And I'm going to look at uh, Tim's plugin really quick because this sounds cool. And then we can um, we'll dig a little more into the uh, other things we might want to do with permissions. Um, Oh, I see. This is cool. Uh, let me pull this up over here. So this is like this ADB IDA plugin, and it looks like it gives you some cool key ADB shortcuts, like uninstall app, kill app, um, clear app data. That's huge. Revoke permissions. Um, this sounds really cool. Um, let's see if we can try it real quick. Um, let's go to settings. Plugins, um, yeah, that's where I'm already. I'm already headed there. One step ahead of you. Let's install this. Um, I don't actually know if I need to restart. Um, oh, it does. All right, let's restart real quick. I'm excited to try this out. This is a great plugin. Thanks for sharing this. Before we move on to doing the camera question that somebody asked, um, I want to show how we can launch the settings screen. Um, and once we uh, launch the settings screen, we can look at some other stuff. Uh, Control Shift A. I wonder what that means for a Mac, because Command Shift A is a different shortcut. Um, yeah. Um, 
I probably have to map a. Oh, control shift A does work. Nice. Um, okay. I don't think I can do anything yet. Maybe that's because it's not like synced and connected. So let me give that a second. Uh, what other plugins do I use? Um, I don't think I have a ton on this uh, system. One that is really nice that I do have. Let me check my installed. Um, so I do like this JSON to Kotlin class. So you can give it uh, some JSON data that you get from like an API, and then it will create your Kotlin data classes for you. And then in the plugin, you can specify which like uh, JSON deserializer you are using. So if you're using JSON or Moshi, you can specify that and it will give you the appropriate um, annotations. Um, what else? I have Markdown for when I'm writing documentation. Presentation Assistant is kind of cool if you ever do uh, stuff like this. So you may have noticed um, when I hit command comma, nope, you didn't see that one. Um, oh, it's being hidden. But like you see this green thing at the bottom that shows you like the keyboard shortcut I use? Uh, that's what Presentation Assistant does. Uh, sometimes it's quick or sometimes the pop-up window covers it. But like if I do, yeah, sometimes the pop-up window covers it, which is annoying. Um, let me do that again. If I double shift, it shows like I went to navigate search everywhere. Uh, I turned that on so that as I use some keyboard shortcuts, y'all will be able to see what I'm doing. Um, if it's ever not there and you want to know how I opened a window or what I did, please ask me. Uh, it's easy for me to forget. Um, why did it split these into two things? Um, this is the accompanist one. We're going to close that. This is our project. Um, we're going to do control shift A. Nice. So let's do revoke permissions. Um, I actually don't know, because I denied this for good, I don't know what revoke permissions is going to do. I'm hoping revoke permissions just clears out all the data. Um, we will find out when the app runs again. Yep, gotta love that. Restart Android Studio and waiting. On my other project, I have um, my progress bar is Pokemon. Um, that's cool. Yeah, I like how do you revoke permissions that have already been revoked? Um, we're going to find out right now. Oh, so it does look like it clears everything um, because I had a, denied the permission, but now I see that. Um, I can give it again. So it must truly like clear that permission data. Um, so is that it? That's what I wanted to test, that revoke permissions? I think so. So now let's request this. Oh, wait. Um, oh, this is awkward. So I saw that I should request the permission, but then once I did, I got this denied for good. That's super weird. Um, Why would it do that? Why doesn't it check initially? Um, maybe that's because it doesn't... I don't know. Um, hmm. Maybe this permission requested... I wonder if this is like per session or something? Um... An interesting flow with the new only one time Android signals should show rationale as false. Um, maybe we can add that here uh, to try to understand that. Does it also check if the request permission was denied? Um, no, I guess it doesn't. Um, well, Interesting. I wonder if this permission requested is like per session. Um,
but I want to see. Oh, it's handled by a company. So maybe this is per session and that was the wrong thing. So um, it always started as false. Okay, that makes sense then. Uh, well, then now it's behaving as expected. So how do I check? Uh, I closed the accompanist app. I want to go back into accompanist and see how they handled it. Um, okay, so if should show rationale or it's not been requested. So this actually is a slightly different flow than I had. Um, so what would this be if you denied forever? I guess this would be false. But then this would be true. Well, this would be permissional passive would be false. But then you're not that, and you get true. So you would have the same problem, right? Actually, we can test this. So let's go into a company. Let's go to permission. And let's, oh, yeah. So a company has the same issue, is that it doesn't show the denied forever right away. Interesting. So maybe that's not possible to do. Maybe initially, and this might be true of the existing system, now that I think about it. Maybe you can't check initially if this is true. Um, maybe you don't have your answer until you actually request the permission. Um, so maybe what we have is, is working as intended, even if it's a little, um, even if it's not like what we want it to be. Um, so we can put this so, like on app startup. This will be false. It's not until the user requests a permission at least once that we can determine if they've denied it before. Um, OK, I think that makes sense. Um, I want to run through this again and make sure that uh, the success flow still works then. We're going to try this set. We're going to uninstall the app um, and then run it again, which should clear our permissions for good. I want to test like the deny once and make sure it still works. Right. That's. What Andrew said is the key point is that um, the should show rationale is wrong because it tries to represent three states, and that was the poorly designed solution. I wish that a companist had wrapped that better, and maybe I'll submit that as a request, but I don't know if they can. Well, they can try. Okay, so this still works, and then allow. Okay, so this does work even if we can't get it. Um, right away um, they can do that can they so then how would we change it so is this wrong should i say if we don't if we don't have the permission and we shouldn't show rationale but I feel like this is wrong. Um, I know. I did this once, too. <laughs> Let's, um, hold on. I did this once, too. Where did I do it? Um, I even put this on GitHub. Uh, let's see if I can find it. This was years ago. Are you ready for an old, old repository? Permissions Manager. Oh, look at that. April 3rd, 2017. That's over four years ago. Um, and I had this. I had on permission denied. Um, okay. Let's uh, let's dig into the live. Let's see how I did that. Um, that was just callback. This is fragment. 
Okay, so permission nine. If we don't have the permission. Oh, is this, wait. It should show returns true. It means we're denied, but not blocked. But then this feels wrong. True. Um. Oh, wait. Oh, I see. I see. So, oh, this is just denied. So that makes sense. So. Oh, my God. This is so confusing. Why? Why don't they just give it to us? Let me run this. Let me run this on a fresh app and I want to see what I'll get. Because that's what I'm afraid of is um, I'm afraid that if we don't have the permission and we shouldn't show the rationale, uh, then doesn't that just mean that um, we've never asked for the permission? I guess that's what we're going to have to find out. Why won't you? Okay, hold on. Let's just do some trial and error. Let's find out ourselves. Yeah, so this is wrong because this is implying that it's always false. Because, of course, like, so from a fresh install, this is, this triggers. That's not what I want. So, like, this was close, but. Yeah, I think that, right, the problem is that should show rationale is false in both of those. Yeah, I'm starting to think that we just can't do this. Now we're just fighting with the permission system, and it's not so much about using permissions in Compose anymore. Um, so let's go with what we have for now. Um, even if that doesn't work, even if this comment is true, um, it's not until these request permission. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So it sounds like this is a flaw in the permission system that we can't check unless the user has asked. Um, interesting. Context, the scope, storage, and permissions were created by the same team. Context was a mistake. Um, okay, so what did I want to do next? I wanted to implement this button. I wanted to show how we can go to settings so that we can change that permission if we wanted to. Uh, so let's actually go to um, back to the sample and let's look at how they did this. Um, so they basically start activity. The intent is for application details and then it parses from like our package name i'm going to copy this one actually uh but one thing to note is that this is called from well it's called from inside an activity right so this is fine um yeah so we should be able to put that anywhere in our app i think let's try it out so we've got this permission denied button when this is clicked we want to launch settings. Let's try it. Um, and hope for the best. Transformations, they've been denied. So we do this. Nice. So this opened up app info. So what we could do from here, let's go into our permissions. Let's change camera to be allow. So we can do that from settings. And we'll go back to the app. Um, and now it says camera permission granted. So 
the UI updated automatically from that. Cool. So let's do this. So let's say, what did we do? We handled permission denied uh, and launch settings. Cool. So that actually went by pretty quick, uh, just to look at that. Um, I know there was a question with this example of actually launching the camera app, um, but I don't know, why don't we dig into permissions a tiny bit further? The only thing that would change is um, if we wanted to request multiple permissions. Uh, let's start by looking at how a company does it, and then we can figure out if we actually want to um, redo that ourselves or not. So in their sample, they have request multiple permission sample. Uh, I think the way that it would work um, is very similar, but uh, I think the way it does now is basically got like a list or a map back of things. So let's look at this. So they have this multiple permission state. So that's different. It's remember multiple permission state instead of remember permission state. And this takes in a list of permissions. And then there's a sample, and it's also got this navigate to settings screen. Um, but let's look. So nice. So this one has an all permissions granted Boolean. So we can check. Oh, we got a cheer. Thank you so much. Uh, so we can see if all the permissions are granted, this is great. Um, similar logic here. This is super confusing. So if we should show the rationale or the user never requested the permission. So this is actually a little different uh, than what we did, is they always show the rationale, even if the user has never requested them. Um, but I think this is, um, ah, this is interesting. This is what I wanted to check. So there's a should show rationale, right? Um, I guess what I'm not sure is like, is this true? If the, well, let's look at the ducks. So we don't get much. I wanted to see, you know, is this true if um, like the user denies one but approves the other? I'm not really sure what we would get out of that, but it does look like we have this revoke permissions, which is the list of permissions that have been denied by the user. And so maybe we can then take um, that information and customize it. And it looks like that's what it does here. So, oh my God, they made this way too complicated. Uh, but it sounds like the answer is yes. They basically get a list of the revoked permissions. Wait. And then loop through them and build a string saying what was revoked and what wasn't. Oh my god, this is... Oh, and then it literally combines it. So it'll say, like, the camera permission is denied, or the camera and read storage permissions were denied. Um, interesting. Yeah, yeah, the permissions code looks good, and then uh, there's just this. Um, I mean, it's a string builder, right? So it's it's just basically combining things with a comma. Um, but also, this is a thing in Kotlin. You can just do, like, join to string or something. Um, but I guess it's not always proper English when you use join to string. It can be weird, but... Okay, but I think this is actually very similar code than we already looked at, but it's just different because you're checking, like, all permissions, um, and otherwise you might have to dig in to figure out which permissions were denied. Um, that's fine. I don't really feel strongly compelled to build this example, unless someone in chat says otherwise. Um, But if not, we can 
Um, look at the camera one. I'm kind of tempted to just do it. I feel weird if I if I don't follow through on the whole concept. You know, I said it, now I feel bad. We gotta follow through on the whole concept. So let's try to do another permission. So in this example, where's their manifest? I just want to copy this. So they also look at like the storage permission. So let's update our sample to request the camera and the storage permission. Um, so there's that. Um, you know what? We'll even do it on another branch. Uh, so that we can keep it separate here. Um, OK. So instead of camera permission state, we'll do Let's call it camera storage permission state. This will be remember multiple permission state. Uh, permissions will be list of this. Read external storage. Um, So, okay, so we can say all permissions granted is what we want to check here. We're going to update our permission granted button to say camera and storage permissions granted. Uh, this has been denied forever is interesting um, because this is no longer on a permission state, but a multiple permission state. Um, and I guess, but I guess it would be the same logic. This isn't yelling at me. We'll find out. We will try it out ourselves. Um, and then... Uh, Yes, we just now need to update the individual parts of this screen. So um, here, let's just say a permission was denied for good, but then we can do something like um, we saw in a company where we can dig through and figure out which permissions were denied for good. Um, but this one, this will now be multiple permission state. And this will be launch multiple permissions request. Uh, maybe we could update this. We could play around with um, figuring out which store or which permission was approved or denied. Um, why are this this ADB plugin worked the first time, but I don't know why. What doesn't want to work the second time? Maybe it's like getting disconnected or something. But um, let's run this. So what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to go through the success flow where I approve both permissions. Um, and then we can go through, blame the user, yeah. Uh, then we can go through and, um, like, deny one permission and see how it behaves. So let's request camera and or storage permission. Uh, we'll say allow, allow. Great. Permissions are granted. Let's, um, let's try this again. So let's revoke permissions. Yeah, why don't you work? Why don't you see... It worked before. All right, but we will just do it the hard way. Um, let's debug this again. And so let's start by, um, OK, let's go through this. And let's approve the camera permission and deny the storage permission. So we'll allow this. We'll deny this. OK, so the rationale shows. Um, this it still has our old copy. It says camera permission. Um, if we click on this, though, um, oh, so I'm requested. In, uh, wait, is this? No, this is the storage one, right? Yeah, so it only asked me for the new one. 
Pfizer denied, don't ask again. It says the permission was denied for good. Open up settings. Okay, so it works. Um, but let's let's take this and let's see if we can try to dive in and understand how we can provide uh, more contextual explanations to the user. So um, how do we do that? Well, we've got this permission rationale, right? Um, let's do something like this. Let's do, um, uh, what is the type of this? If we do camera storage permission, say that. Oh, so the revoked permissions gives us a list of permission state entities. So let's do this. List permission state. So we've got these revoked permissions. Um, let's create a list of what was revoked, right? Uh, so missing permissions can be um, basically um, map. There's like map the permission, uh, right? And then like join to string, basically join them with a comma. I think that's actually the default. Yeah, it is. So join to string, cool Kotlin operator to connect things. Um, so let's change this, uh, following permissions. So this is not like the cleanest message, but I want to update our rationale to say like, this is a rationale explaining why we need the following permissions and then show what was missing. Um, in order to do this, I'm going to have to clear this again. Um, oh, this, yeah, because I think join to string can take in a map, right? Or like a, a transform, that's what it is. So we could do okay, join to string. Um, yeah, and then transform is at the end. So we could do like permission state dot permission. Is that what you meant, Tim? I think so. But good catch. Good call out. Okay. So I'm going to do the first time I go through this, I'm going to deny both permissions. Uh huh. And okay, so we didn't get like clean names here, but we did get the rationale to say, um, you know, uh, this is why we need the following permissions camera, read external storage. So let's do this again. Let's approve camera, but deny storage. And now we can see our rationale only shows storage. So this is actually good. This is, um, why this shows how we can look at specifically like permissions that were denied in our overall list. Um, and then I actually want to see, can you do remove? Oh, you can do remove prefix. That's amazing. So I can remove the annoying prefix. Do I want to run it on Android 11 just for fun? Um, maybe. Actually, what is API 29? Isn't that Android 11? Um, oh no, I'm running it on Android 10. Uh, what is different about Android 11? Or did you mean 12? That's possible you meant 12. Um, oh, I don't want to remove this. I want to remove this prefix. Oh, one time permission. Yeah, we could we could do something like that. Let's let's get this working first. Um, cool. So we cleaned up that that uh that text. Um so 
just to make our sample a little cleaner, um, I'm going to make another extension function that's helpful. Um, I'm going to go down here. We're going to do multiple permission state. Uh, we're going to get revoke permission names as a string. <laughs> Windows 11. <laughs> um, Okay, but we're just going to do a helper function that does that mapping of the permission names for us. And so up here, um, we're going to say, um, well, actually here we can say revoke permission names. With a string and just replace this. Um, so here I'm going to do uh, uh, well, that's, that one's fine. Um, so here we'll, we're going to do the same thing. Permission names. The. So I'm not going to be as fancy in saying like was denied or were denied, but this way, our permission deny button will actually be a little more specific about what was denied in settings. Um, and then we just clean that up. Go to permission names. Um, cool. And so this will give us like a little more detail on each button. So let me just run that and try it out. See what I mean? Uh, we could even do it on this main button. I just realized the main button um, wasn't still just says camera and or storage. But if we do this, we deny and don't ask again. We can see the real external storage permission was denied open settings. Cool. So that's one way of... Let me go back. So all this code was what I highlighted there is it's a way to look at the revoked permissions, basically get like the permission name, and then you can... Do whatever you want with that, but it gives you a little more granular permission on um, which permissions were denied. So let's let's do that. Uh, handling. Wait, did I do that already? Handling multiple permission requests. Uh, oh, got a hydrate. Right. Thank you, Tim. Cheers. All right, let's create an Android 11 emulator and let's try it out. One thing I'm going to do before that though, so to keep our conversation around Android 11 simple, I'm gonna go back to the development branch and we're just gonna do it with one single permission because uh, multiple permissions was kind of confusing there. Um, I think actually, uh, yeah, my phone is charged. Let's. Run it on a Pixel 4 because my phone should be running Android 11. Um, I will just need to screen share for you real quick. Uh, actually, this I don't know if this is going to. Okay, I have to kill the emulator first. All right, and that's my phone. Let's wait for Gradle to build, um, and then we can test this out on Android 11. Permissions are confusing. I'm so glad the Capsule app doesn't need any yet. <laughs> Actually, wait, that's not true. We're we're going too soon, but I'm not working on that feature, so it's not my problem. Uh, okay, let's request the permission. Cool, so we want to do well, I like how there's while using the app. That's fine. That's probably the same as granting it, more or less. Um, we're saying we want to try only this time. Okay, so I got camera permission granted. It shows on the screen now. Um, 
let's close the app uh, and compose permissions. Okay, so wait, it still says granted. That's probably because I only like backgrounded it. Let's force close and now open it. Weird, it still says granted. Didn't I click only this time? Am I crazy? Am I crazy? Hold on. It says no per- what? Why does this say- hold on, okay. No permissions granted. This says ask every time for camera. Okay. Um, is this a bug in a companist? What? Why is this a yes? I force closed the app, right? This is weird. Let me uh, do one thing for you real quick. Okay, there, now you should see my, my taps. Um, false fails. Whoa. Okay, so what do we do? Let's check out the... Let's, um... I'm going to go to a companist, and we're going to see if someone's talked about this. Um... I don't think that's it. Um. Oh wait, it is this one. Um. Okay, so wait. So I said this. Android 11 allows clicking outside the permission dialog. I didn't know that that was true. Um, when clicking outside the dialog, the activity result callback is called saying the permission is not granted, but the system also says the rationale shouldn't be shown. I agree with you, the UX is far from ideal. However, the system doesn't give us enough information to know the user hasn't interacted with the dialog. And they're going to talk to the permission state. Ah, so this was from three days ago. Wait, is this your issue? I don't know. Um, Weird. But this is still not quite, um, this is like a different issue, is that we've got a permission that we allowed and we said only use this time, uh, but it's still coming back as true. Um, but like, if we look at our settings, we can see like, um, well, this is like dark for now. It was there a second ago. Um, this is super weird. Like, why is this grayed out? Uh, this should show the camera one. Um, that's super weird. Let's uninstall. Let's run it again. The root of this post is the same problem? I see. Um, So, oh, so you're saying it might be the same problem that whatever a company is reading from the system about whether or not the permission's approved. Oh, I see. Okay. Interesting. So it could be powered by the same logic, but then that feels like it's doubly broken because... I get this, so this issue reads to me as they're saying we've clicked outside the window, which is allowed on Android 11, and that triggers this false negative about um, whether or not a user actually denied something. But here we're saying this permission should not be available, and yet a companist is saying it is. I don't like that doesn't feel right to me. Um, Yeah, that does, that feels weird. Uh, 
let me I kind of want to dig into the accompanist logic to see if I can understand how they're requesting it. Um, but this might be a bug. Because um, this, so the deny, so this all works. Oh, you're right. So, oh, so in Android 11, um, you can deny a permission twice, but it doesn't explicitly say deny and don't ask again. Um, Let's change this to ask every time from the settings. Um, okay, that time it was approved. But now it still says approved again. Um, actually, I've never saw this before. Yeah. So this must be an accompanist. Um, maybe we will make an issue together. Um, and I can submit this. Um, or we can try... Um, actually, okay. So before we make an example with our, with our code base, I am going to open up the accompanist sample again. We're going to see if it's an issue um, in their sample code base, because then it will be easier to post the issue. Uh, thank you for stopping by, Tim. I'll try to stop by and chat tomorrow. I'm sorry I haven't been around, but I'll try to come in tomorrow if you're going to be there. Um, let's take a look at their sample, and if this doesn't work, maybe we can go, I will make an issue, and you can all see that. That would be a cool thing to do on stream. I haven't done that. Uh, but just talking through like the sort of open source process and how to make like issues and submit feedback to open source libraries. Um, that's always good. I want to see if there was anything else about permissions and the issues. Um, no, just coil stuff there. All right, let's run the company sample. Let's see if this works. And then um, we've been streaming for a while, so I might wrap it up after this issue. Um, whoever it was that asked me about launching the camera, if I don't do that tonight, uh, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. I can send you some sample code for that or um you'd be surprised i think the official documentations on launching the camera is pretty good uh i did something like this a while ago to like take a picture and get the response and i actually just used pretty much the official android docs which were really helpful for that example so just gotta wait on gradle build do, 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 do. anyone do anything fun over the last weekend anyone doing anything fun this weekend some friends are visiting this weekend, and we get to see um, my girlfriend Foster's dogs. Recently, she just passed one year of fostering dogs. We've saved, like, 12 dogs. We She's done all the hard work. Uh, but her very first foster dog was adopted by one of her friends, and they're coming out to visit. So we get to see, like, her, um, her first foster doggo again. All right, this didn't even run. I'm not sure what failed here. Let's try it again. Okay, now it's working. All right, let's find out if the accompanist sample uh, put the counter for a week. Oh, that's very exciting. That's I, I'm not offended. You can, I hope that you uh, don't tune into the stream. Have a good time. Um, okay, we're in the accompanist sample. We're going to request permission. We're going to say only this time. Camera permission granted. Let's force close the accompanist sample. Let's open it again. And it says permission granted. Okay, this is a bug. So let's go ahead and submit this on their on the GitHub repo. Uh we'll go to issues, new issue. Uh yep, this is a bug report. So there's probably a template. I see. So we can say uh I'm gonna put permissions on a tag so they can see this. 
false positive when um, clicking only this time. Is that what it's called? Oh, SKM, thank you for the follow. Uh, so how do we describe this? So when asking for permission, clicking only this time will update the sample app to show that the permission is granted. If we force close the app and reopen it, it still says the camera permission is granted. We would expect it not to be granted the second time. Um, and then we can say no. Uh, let's verify. Actually, let me verify what I'm about to say. So I want to say that inside the app info, yep, uh, settings, it says no permissions granted. So we can put that in our note when we look at the application settings. We can see that no permissions are granted. So accompanist is returning a false positive. Uh, steps to reproduce. So what? Open the sample app, go into permissions. When requesting camera permission. Uh, permission screen. Let's split this up. Click request permission and select only this time. Or close the app, reopen to permission screen and see that permission is granted. Expected behavior. Um, what is the expected behavior? Um, if we only grant a permission for this session, we would expect that it shows denied or not allowed the next time the user answers the app. Enters the app. Uh, Let's see if we can get a screen recording really quick of this happening. Um, in order to do this, I'm going to uninstall the app so I can get a fresh version. Um, there's a really cool tool out here I use, uh, AZ Screen Recorder. Really great for um, getting screen recordings on Android. Um, OK. So let's, ooh, Lost Moon, thank you for the follow. Thank you for coming by. So let's record this real quick. Um, request permission, request permission, only this time. Camera permission granted. This is all as expected so far. Force close this, open up Accompanist again, scroll through, request permission, camera permission granted. All right, so that worked. Let's send this to myself. I'm gonna do it on uh, some other platform. How do I wanna do this actually? Um, I should reinstall Push Bullet so I can just push it to Chrome. Um, I'm just gonna send it to myself in Slack. Uh, please bear with me. I'm gonna open it up in another window and download. Um, Oh, I forgot that Logcat could do recording. I also know of a good screen recorder uh, for Mac OS, but um, I decided not to use that. It's time to record right on the phone. So we'll download that. Downloads, save. And now GitHub supports videos, so we can just do a nice drag and drop right there. Nice. Um, Android OS, Android 11. This will be Pixel 4 XL, and the company's version will be 0.14.0. .0. I don't think there's additional context, so we'll leave that out. Um, and I think this is everything. So permissions, false positive, when clicking only this time on Android 11. And we described it. We've got the video. Let's preview this. Um, 
that's the right video. It's working good. Awesome. Let's submit this issue. Cool. I will post this in chat if any of you want to subscribe to the issue and follow along. Uh, but that was really, um, that was actually a cool bug to find. Um, just to go through that together, verify the bug together, and walk through creating an issue on a public repo. I think that that's something that might be new to a lot of people. So hopefully if you've never done this process that you learned something from that. Uh, Accompanist, this is probably because it's a Google repo, did a really good job of having a very clear template for a bug report. Um, really nice that they added that. Maybe in another stream we can uh, show how to add templates to issues. Um, it's very similar to adding pull request templates, which are awesome if your team isn't using those. Um, but yeah. Uh, and then also you can all like feel free to like react to this if you want. Uh, give it like a little thumbs up. I don't know if that actually impacts any like prioritization on their end. But um, yeah, this is exciting. So I think with that, I think I'll wrap it up a little earlier tonight, unless anyone has any other questions or um, things with permissions that we want to dive into. Um, I think this accompanist repo that we looked at in the beginning, I think it's really cool and it has uh, a lot of neat stuff on the inside. Um, I would love to look at like placeholder uh, we can even look briefly uh, just to see it. So there's like the shimmer placeholder, it looks like. Uh, that happened really slow, so I didn't get to see it. Um, oh, I see. You have to pull to refresh. Um, so that's really cool. Let's look at the shimmer one again. Ooh, fancy. I don't know if you can see it shimmering. Uh, so this is cool. This seems to be a really cool library and accompanist, and maybe next week uh, we can explore this, because I think I love these placeholder UIs. Um, I've built one in the past when I was working at OkCupid. It was painful but fun, and I bet this would make it uh, all fun. So maybe we can try this out next week. Um, but yeah, also, um, but yeah, definitely if you are all... If you are not subscribed on YouTube, please do. I've got a video coming out soon when we hit 600 subscribers. Um, I found interesting the work required to use data store with Compose. Interesting. Um, we can definitely look at that. I'll keep that down as an idea. Um, yeah, check out YouTube. Um, I apologize, last week's video is not up there yet. But I'll work on it. Last week's video, we did one of the Android dev challenges. Um, I will try to get that up. I really just need to make the thumbnail, um, and then I can post that to YouTube. I've already like uploaded it and done all the time markers. So maybe I'll get that up tonight. Um, and then this video, hopefully over the weekend, I can get it up. So Awesome. All right. Thank you all for coming by. I will... Let me take a quick look to see if anyone is online that I can raid and we can go hang out. Um, see if anyone else is coding or anything. Um, let's see, raid channel. I'm not sure. Oh, interesting. So I'm actually not following anyone who is live right now. So we will uh, we will call it a night. Um, thank you all for coming by, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Have a good night.